This is the Craftsman 3214 molding head. It's not really a tool that you see in a, a professional woodworking shop, but it does add a tremendous amount of versatility for the small, uh, and maybe even up to small production. Uh, I wouldn't use it as my main dado, for instance, but I'd be tempted to use it as a, a molding cutter. And that's primarily what I use this one for. It's an easy enough tool to set up. If you've never done it, the very first thing you want to want to do is sharpen the blades before you do anything, even if it's brand new. Sharpen the blades. And I made a video, the, the link will be down below in the description, to go ahead and do that. The other most common thing that I have seen happen is people putting the cutters in backwards. So you want to make sure that your groove faces away from the Allen set screw. As you screw the Allen screw in, it has a tapered slot and it drives this both down and sideways, locking that groove together. Get it snug. Go another sixteenth. On to the next one. It's actually fairly easy to do it. I've put one in backwards before and uh, wasn't on this cutter. It was on my father's that I used to borrow before I bought this one. It shattered a bit. It let it be known it was unhappy and then it, it quickly I just rectified the situation. You wouldn't destroy anything provided you are uh, you know, you get on her in a hurry because what it allows the cutter to do is move sideways as it goes. And that's the chattering. Was it rattling back and forth? So they have been sharpened. They have been torqued. Now I need to put it in the saw. You need to make sure that you have got a big clearance insert. You can't run it without an insert. That is an invitation to disaster. Don't do that. If you have to, you can always make one out of the properly thickness plywood and then raise your saw very carefully up through it. You sort of put the edge of your rip fence on top to hold it down and then you can very, very carefully, very slowly raise it up through it. This is the one that came with my saw. However, it itself wasn't wide enough, so I ended up raising my dado through the slot at least once there to uh, widen it out and it, since it's an aluminum plate everything survived that just fine so disposable ones are nice if you have them easy to make too so you want to go ahead and get it in making sure the rotation is correct and check that it clears your saw I have just the tiniest little whisper of clearance. I'm sorry, I misspoke earlier. I had forgotten that I kept a series of shims hung on the rack with the rest of my saw blades specifically to space this cutter out. For this for this throat plate. forgot that I did that. The first thing you should know about using one of these things is the god-awful noise it makes. It's uh, can be a scary sounding tool. I hate standing in front of it. Like I said, no problems. Make sure all those blades are torqued and tight and you give it that extra little something but I hate standing in front of it. What I'm going to use this cutter for today is to plow out the backside of window casing trim. And I'm going to take it from about here to about here, and then from about here to about here. This way, when my casing sits in the hole, it'll only touch here, here, and here. So that, you know, uh, when you're working with houses, they're just never perfect. This way you have much less actually touching. It also makes it easy for you to plane 
and scribe your lines in because you're only cutting about a half inch here and about a half inch here and a half inch here rather than trying to plane the entire width of the board down to get it to fit the hole. This is basically standard as far as casement work is concerned. You got the glue? Let's make the loud noises first, okay? Yep, we're going to put that in there. As far as height goes, I'll adjust it by eye. It really doesn't need to be much. Maybe eighth of an inch is all you're looking to plow out of the backside. If your casing is worse than that, you're going to have to scribe it to the whole custom anyways. Ready for the loud noises? Yeah. You're not scared. You ready? Here they come. <laughs> like these, this is the benefit of sharpening your molder cutter. It really is a planing. It's a jack plane spinning around down in there. So that makes a tremendous, tremendous difference as to how well it cuts. Now I've gone ahead and spaced it out so that I will have one half an inch of material in the middle. Here comes the loud noises. <laughs> There it is. Half inch, half inch, half inch. Now when you're installing this you need to remember to keep your screws in those locations or your nails or whatnot. The ward would probably hold up just fine because it's a nice thick one if you drove right in the middle of the field. But I'm not going to guarantee it, especially if you miss and hit it too hard trying to sink the head. Otherwise, you shouldn't need more than three across no matter what you're doing. That's the tri-beat molding cutter. The Craftsman Tri-Wing Molding Set. It's a pretty useful tool in a small shop. The single cutter, fly cutter molding heads, they look pretty dang scary. I recommend the three cutters. If nothing else, you're sharing the workload. Your cutters will last longer. I've never used a single cutter. This is what I recommend. This is what I use. And this is what I've never ever had a problem with. Thanks for watching.